on the mountain, in the valley, in the crowded streets, or the empty desert, in our hope, and in our waiting, we are never alone. God is with us. I want to talk today about the presence of God, because really, that's what the Christmas season is always focused on. It's about God leaving in the form of Jesus Christ and coming to earth and dwelling among his people. It's all about God leaving the heavenlies and coming to earth as a little baby to live a humble life, to give his life as a sacrifice for each and every one of us. And so a key verse that's going to drive this service or drive this series for the next four weeks is this. Stand to your feet with me as we read it today. Open your Bibles. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23 says, look, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call him what? What will they call him? Emmanuel, which means what? God is with us. What does it mean? God is with us. Father God, help your word to speak life to us today. May it encourage our hearts. God, may we understand that you're the God who walks with us. You are with us, God, no matter the trials, no matter the struggles, no matter the heartbreaks and, and breakdowns of life, you are with us on the mountaintop, in the valley, among the people, in the desert places. You are with us. So God, let your word speak life to us today. Let it encourage us and change us in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Well, I'll start off today by saying this. Life is full of different seasons. Different seasons of life come our way. Some are good and some are bad. Sometimes we're on the mountaintop and life is good. Bills are paid. Uh, we're well fed. We're healthy. We have nice cars and nice houses. The baby sleeps all night long. We go Black Friday shopping. We get a spot up front and we get that exact item that we were looking for. Why? Because we're doing pretty good. It's, it's the season we say, hashtag blessed. Because life's good. Life's filling and life is full. But then there's other seasons that aren't so great. There's seasons where the valleys take us deep into a dark place. There's times in life whenever it's bad news. You're in the middle of pain. There's times whenever the doctor's call comes in and it's not great or good news. There's times that, that you have different worry that comes in and different fear. There's times that there's different uh, darkness that comes in and, and, and there's times that we feel loss and we feel suffering and we feel pain. The mountaintop or the valley, the mountaintop where things are great and grand and life is good and the valley where it just feels like life is eking by. Whether you're in the valley or whether you're on the mountaintop, I'm here to tell you, God with you. Now, I can stop right there because that pretty much is the sum, summation of what I'm going to say today, that God came in the form of a child to be with you no matter where you're at in the seasons of your life. You may be on the mountaintop and life is good, and then all of a sudden, bam, out of nowhere, something rocks your world. And all of a sudden, you find yourself from the mountaintop into the deepest, darkest, painful valley. You may be here today, and, and, and life is going good, and your marriage is good, and all of a sudden, something happens, and it rocks your marriage. You may be here today and your health is going great and you're in fit shape, you're in the best shape of your life, and then bam, all of a sudden, a heart attack or a stroke out of nowhere. You may be today here and you, you have all your finances together and everything is just right exactly how you want it, how you want it, till bam, economic tragedy hits your home. Good things and bad things come to all of us. All of us journey on a, on a path of high 
mountaintops and low valleys. But I want to remind all of us here today that no matter where you're at in the journey of life, God is with us. His spirit, his presence comforting us, guiding us, directing us, encouraging us when we need him the most. (laughs) Write this down in your notes, my first thought for today. We may enjoy God on the mountaintop, but we get to know him intimately in the valleys. I'm going to say that again. We may enjoy God and his presence on the mountaintop, but we really get to know God when we go through the valleys of our life. I want to read to you a psalm, a psalm that oftentimes will be overlooked, but Psalm 84 talks about this exact thing. Turn your Bibles with me. Psalm 84, starting in verse 5, it says this, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before the God of Zion. This valley of Baca that we would call it uh, was more than likely a place that was familiar to the readers of the time. It would have been familiar in the old country uh, where Israel is. It would have been familiar in the desert places. And the valley of Baca was more than likely a tree, a tree of Baca, because what they would do in those times is they would look for a, uh, they would look for a, a monument in a valley and they would name it after that monument so that everybody knew where the meeting place was. The Valley of Baca, this tree, more than likely was a tree that would ooze sap. And so if you look closely, when you walk past this tree, it looked like it was crying or weeping because the sap oozing out. So I would say that the Valley of Baca would represent the sorrow places of our lives, the worry places that we journey through. The valley uh, is full of all kinds of things. If you've ever been to um, <coughs> a mountaintop and you look down, go to the Grand Canyon, you go to, uh, go to some place where you look down, it's amazing to see when you look down from the mountain, down below in the valley, there's lots of rough terrain in the valley. The, the, the terrain is rough. Uh, there's, there's thorn and there's thistles and there's all kinds of rough terrain. There's wild animals that live down in the valley. Lots of things like that. But one of the things that I think about in a valley is when I think about a battle plan. Throughout scripture, we hear about this, but also today in a battle plan, you don't want the low ground, you want the high ground. Because the high ground gets you vantage point to see for miles and gives you vantage point to see over your enemies. But I want to just kind of tell you today, in the valley, when you go through a valley, you don't want to be in the valley in a battle because you're vulnerable. You're exposed. If you're up on the mountaintop, you can see everything going on down in the valley because you're vulnerable and exposed. Some of you today, just hear me when I say this, you're going through a valley because God is striving to expose and make you vulnerable to greater things he wants to do in your life. He has to take you through the valley and walk with you through the valley so that you may experience something greater in his spirit than you ever could if you just stayed on the mountaintop. The Bible says in verse 5, it says, Blessed are those whose strength is found in the Lord. The world, if they don't know who God is, the world's response to pain and suffering and sorrow is give up. I quit. I can't do it on my own. They, their response is, I'm fatal. They turn to things to fill the void of their sorrow. They turn to drinking and and they turn to alcohol and they turn to drugs and they turn to uh, all kinds of other addictions in order to fill the sorrow of their life. But for those of us who know God, for those of us who know Christ, we have a greater strength. We have someone we can tap into far beyond what the world has to hold. For those of us who are Christ followers, our first response should always be to turn to the steady strength in our lives. Now, some of you need to all start preaching with me now because it sounds dead in here. (laughs) I'm preaching good here. This is good stuff. See, we as Christ followers, 
Our response does not come. Our solution to the sorrows and the journey and the problems and the pains of life is not found in the bottom of Jack Daniels. It's not found in the bottom of the wine glass. It's not found at the end of a joint. Our strength is found in our source of God himself. We have a greater power to tap into than what the world does. Because I have found that in the bottom and at the end of all those things, when you wake up the next day, you still are in the steps of sorrow because you've not tapped into the right source. God calls us to tap into something stronger, something greater. It's much like whenever you work out and you're working with free weights and you're doing the bench press, you always want to have a spotter because when your muscles get fatigued and they give out, that bar is coming down somewhere. You know, I've had it happen before. I've had it come down without a spotter right here. And I've had to wiggle my way around to get it over my head and get it out of my way. But man, when there's a spotter, I have all the confidence in the world. I can push through. And if he needs a little help, he just helps me out a little bit. And that's where we tap into a greater source is in God. Blessed are those whose strength is found in God. If you're in a valley today, I'm here to tell you your greatest strength is not found in anything or any person but God and God alone. It does not say blessed are the people who do it themselves. It does not say, blessed are those who are so determined. They say, I'm going to pull myself up my bootstraps and I'm going to make this happen. It does not say that. Blessed are those. It doesn't say, blessed are those who figure out how to financially make it work. It doesn't say, blessed are those who figure out how to, how to do life without God. No, no. Blessed are those whose hope is found in who? In? God. Let's say it again. In? God. Blessed are those who find their hope in God. Our source is not independent. Our source depends on God. Blessed are you today if you hear these words and you cry out and you're dependent not on your strength but on God's and God's alone. Some of you need today, you need to admit you can't do it on your own. You don't have what it takes. But some of you are so full of pride and so full of arrogance, and you just think, I can do this life. I can make it alone. I can figure out my family. I can figure out my finances. I can figure out how to make my job work, and I can figure out how to do this and do that. I can do it on my own. You don't realize what you're doing is you're saying, I don't need God. I'm on my own. Some of you, your greatest dependence you need today is not on your spouse. It's not on your husband. It's not on your wife. It's not on your kids. It's not on your job. Your dependence today needs to be in one sole source, God and God alone, because your husband will let you down. No matter how good he is, I'm sure he's a good man. He will let you down. Your wife will fail at times. No matter how good they are, no matter how perfect they, they, they try to be, they will let you down. Your kids, that goes without saying, <laughs> right? People will let us down. Jobs will fail. Economies fall. But God remains the same. He is a steady, constant, he is an ever-present help in times of trouble, the Bible says. Blessed are those whose strength is found in God. Another translation says it this way, what joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have set their minds on the pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Blessed are those Joyful are those who have their minds set on God. To get to the city, to get to the promised land, we must go through the valley. To get to the promised places that God has for each and every one of us, there are times we have to go through the sorrow and the pain and the pathway of the valley. We don't like it, it's not easy. But what joy it is for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have set their minds on God. Can I just say something to you guys? What you think matters. How you think matters. What your mind is set on matters. What you put in your mind matters because what you put in your mind will come out some way. 
Paul said it this way to the Colossians. He said, set your minds on things that are not from below, but things that are from above. Philippians, he says, if anything is excellent, praiseworthy, admirable, lovely, focus and think upon these things. Because uh, where you're at right now in your life, if you're in a valley, your mind, what you set your mind on matters. If you're looking at all the negative and you're looking at all the pessimistic things and you're looking around and you go, life is horrible and I'm a horrible person and, oh, these people treat me horrible and, oh, they'll never get... If your mind is set, listen, I've learned something. Your mind determines your outlook. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so he goes. I have been around people my entire life. I know people And here's what I've learned about people. The thought patterns of a person's life determines the direction and the water course of their faith. I've I've learned it. I've watched it. People who always always are like, I've learned that people that say, oh, they're they're out to get me. They're out to do something to me. They're out to harm me. I've learned that if people say that, more than likely, that's because that's their heart. People who always think someone's out to get them are probably the same people always out to get somebody else. Some of you don't like that, but it's true. I've also learned the opposite is true. A person who always is wanting to bless people is a person who's always blessed. The reaping and sowing of our lives is absolutely true. Where your mind is, there you go. So you're in a valley right now, set your mind on God. You have heartache right now, set your mind on God. Your soul is restless, set your mind on God and say, peace be still in my soul. Holidays are coming up, you're anxious about family coming together and the the troubles that the history and the things like that. Set your mind on God. Going through the holidays with loss and with with pain, set your minds on God. What are we gonna do? We're gonna what? Set our minds on God. Who are we gonna set it on? We're gonna set it on why? Because God is He is with us, walking, guiding, directing our lives. Valley of tragedy, God is still good. Valley of loss, God is still good. His word encourages us and guides us. The Bible says that your word is a lamp unto my feet. I always thought that was an unusual analogy. Why would we have a lamp at our feet? doesn't make sense to me because if I go out and I'm going out in the forest, you better believe I want the brightest, biggest spotlight I can find because I want to see any critters out there, right? I want to know what's coming up before I ever get on them, you know? But the Bible says that your word is a lamp unto my feet. And here's what I feel it's insane. It's saying that God may not let us see way down the road, but God will let us see the next step to take. So you're in the middle of a valley and you don't know what to do and you're asking God, God, show me the way. Show me how to get to the promised land. Show me how to get out of this valley and quick. And God's like, no, no, no. We're just going to take this one step at a time. You're just going to have to trust me one move at a time. Scripture says they pass through the valley of Baca and they make it a place in springs where autumn rains cover and it with pools. In the valley, the weather would come down and we, saw, we actually saw this when we went to Israel, in a very dry place. In the mountaintops, that when it would rain on the mountaintops, it would literally cause floods in the valleys. Didn't happen all the time, didn't happen every day, but you could see on the mountaintops and you knew within a matter of hours that terrain was going to start letting the water flow down into the valleys. It's where a lot of lush greenery would grow. Some of you here today, God's telling you, just continue walking in the valley. You may be dry, you may feel thirsty, you may feel weary, but The spring and the waters are coming to refresh your soul. Doesn't mean you're going to get out of the valley. Doesn't mean he's going to just swoop down and pick you up and be like, oh, you're done. No, he's going to provide exactly what you need while going through the valley. 
while going through the pain, while going through the loss, while going through the tragedy, he'll give you exactly what you need. You may be in the valley, but can I tell you, you're just passing through. It may be difficult, but God's going to give you his strength to see you through. You may be hurting today, but God will be the God of all comfort. You may be in a dark place, but he's going to give you just enough light to trust him one more day. No, no, I want out. God, get me out of here. Get me out of this painful place I'm going through. I don't like it. I'm hurting. I'm struggling. And yet God says, but wait, I'm bringing you a river and a spring, and you're going to get to drink and find refreshment, but you must go through the valley. It says they make a well, they call and they cry out to God, and God answers their prayer. Let me put this in real terms. You're going through a relational struggle with a friend or a spouse, and it feels like you're in a very dry place, in a desert place, remember, we experience joy from God on the mountaintops. We get to know God through the valleys. I would encourage you, get to know God greater through the valleys, whatever you're going through today. You're here today, and the doctor's report came in, and, and there's no hope. Walk with him through the valley. Trust in him through the valley, and he will bring you through. God says this, you show me your faith, I'll show you my faithfulness. Some of you here today, you need to show God that you are committed and faithful no matter what, and he will show you every time he is faithful. Happened throughout scripture. If you dig it, he will fill it. If you prepare a way, he will help you and show you how to get there. You show your faith, he will show his faithfulness. Jesus did this. Jesus did it. Here's what Jesus did. A blind man came to Jesus one day, and uh, he was wanting his sight back. What did Jesus do? Jesus stooped down. He spit on the ground. He took some mud from his saliva. He's rubbed it in the guy's eyes, okay? Just first off, gross. I know he's the son of God and all, but that's still sick. Did Jesus need the mud? Nope. Did Jesus need a spit? Nope. Jesus didn't need the mud. He didn't need, if that was the case, anytime I wanted to be healed, I'd be going out spitting on the ground trying to rub it on something to heal myself, right? Jesus didn't need any of that. What he needed was the man's faith because Jesus said to him, now go and wash and, re and receive sight. And the man had a decision to make. Does he have faith? In Jesus, or does he denounce who Jesus is? What did he do? He went and washed, and what happened? He could see. Another story goes that uh, <clears throat> a crippled man that had been crippled for 38 years, was, was his friends wanted to get him healed, heard Jesus was speaking, opened up the roof of a house because it was so crowded, lowered the man down in front of Jesus, and Jesus looks at this man, and Jesus could have just said, you're healed. But what did Jesus say? He said, take up your mat and walk. The man's faith was, I will believe I'm healed. And he got off his mat, rolled it up, and left walking that day. One of the most comical stories that I think about when it comes to faith and faithfulness, I find in Lazarus' story. The story of Lazarus was, Lazarus, a good friend of Jesus, dies, and he's been dead for four days. Four days he was dead for. Jesus shows up on the scene four days later, and what does he say? He says, he says, roll the stone away. And then he just, I just, I think it's so, I mean, this is faith. This is faith. I mean, Lazarus was dead, and Jesus said, hey, Lazarus, come on out. By faith, Lazarus got up, walked out, and was completely from dead to life. Because you show your faith, God will show his faithfulness. Some of you here today, you've been struggling in your faith. You're struggling in your walk. There was a time and a place where you were close to God, but something has shifted, and you're struggling in your faith. You're struggling to believe. You're struggling to hold out hope and faith in him. I'm here to tell you, if you dig it, he will fill it. If you plant it, he will grow it. If you cry out to him, he will hear your cry, and he will meet you exactly where you're at. The Bible says if. I love the if scriptures. Here's what if says. If, if, if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. If you draw near to God. If you seek him, you will find him when you seek him with all your heart. 
If you, uh, if you make room for him, he will reveal himself to you. If it's all contingent on your faith. So you're in the middle of a journey. You're in the middle of a valley. You don't know where to turn. Turn up and look to God and seek his face and cry out to him. He will hear your cry in the middle of your pain and your sorrow. I have found a truth that is, I believe, pretty universal throughout Scripture and throughout my life, and that is this. I don't have this in your notes, but write this down. God rarely reveals himself to the rushed. Can I say that again? God rarely reveals himself to the rushed. If you're too busy doing your thing and you're too busy going about your calendar and your schedule and your agenda, God cannot reveal himself to you because you're too busy to see what God is really trying to do in your life in your family's life, and in your future. There have been so many times and seasons in my life whenever I've been so rushed, I've missed out on what God wanted to say and do, and I've had to just slow myself down, slow my roll, and say, okay, God, what do you, what are you doing here? Moses. Moses would have never seen the burning bush if he was going 75 miles per hour down the highway and the burning bush is off in the distance. He would never have saw it because it was too far. But what happened? Moses comes on the burning bush, and God says, take off your sandals for you're on holy ground. And it says that he stayed there with God. Fast forward to Moses' story, and Moses was on the mountain, and he was getting the Ten Commandments. He was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. Was not rushed. Jesus was constantly leaving his friends, going out to the desert to find time with God because God cannot reveal himself if you're rushed. Some of you need to just slow down in the valley and just be like, okay, I just got to take a breath. God, I don't know what you're doing, but I trust you've got me. Some of you have a decision to make. Some of you have this journey you're on is greater than you, and God would say, be still and know that I am God. Shh. This holiday season is going to be filled with parties and with, with uh, gifts and with packages and with family and friends coming over and lots of things happening. I mean, Christmas is always a busy time for all of us. I'm just going to encourage you here at the start, quiet your soul and take a breath and say, okay, God, as I journey through this, be with me. We enjoy him on the mountaintop, but we get to know him in the valley. We enjoy him on the mountaintop. We get to know him in the valley. This Christmas season, may you draw near to God. And as you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Again, the scripture says this, and the virgin will be with child and his name will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is with you today. He is with your family. He is with your marriage. He is with your kids. He is with your finances. If you let him, if you allow him to be there, he is with you. He reveals his character in the valley. He reveals who he is in the valley, and he gives you strength in the valley. Re uh, trust him. You're just passing through the valley. You're not there to stay. You're just passing through to the next place that God has for you. You feel weak today? Find strength in God. Feel like you're covered in darkness? Let God's light guide your step. You're in a season of trouble? Let you find joy and peace in his presence. You're just passing through the valley. You will not die in the valley. You will journey to the place that God has for you. Same God on the mountain, same God in the valley. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Bow your heads with me today. Father God, for those today, I just feel like there's those here today that God are just journeying in a, a painful place, a, a valley of sorrow, a valley of weeping, God, a place where sadness is great. And God, I pray that, that today they would hear these words, the words that say, seek me and you will find me. Seek me and you will know that I am your strength. I am the God who comforts and directs and guides you. I am the God who sees the pain you're going through. And the same tears you cry are tears that I see and tears that say and speak a language to me. God, I pray for those who are hurting today, for those who are going through a valley, for those who feel paralyzed from the valley they're going through. May they find strength in you, God. May they find hope in you, I pray. 
God, may they know that the same God we may enjoy on the mountaintops, we get to know him intimately in the valley. With head bowed and eyes closed, you're here today going through a valley, going through a season of, of struggle, a season of, of heartbreak, a season of pain. May you know today that God is for you. May you know today that God is within a cry of your voice. He hears you when you cry out. He sees the wrestling in your heart. He knows the unsettled in your soul. He says to you today, depend on my strength. I will bring you through. <clears throat> I will give you exactly what you need. May you find your rest in him today. If that's you, with your head bowed and eyes closed, just say, God, I need you. In the valley I'm going through, I need you, God. I need your strength. I need your hope. I need your peace. I need to know that I'm just passing through. And I'll find strength in you on the other side of the journey.
Father God, today that song speaks true about who you are. That when we go through the valleys, we go through the struggles, we go through the pains of life, you're there. Your strength is there. You make us have wells in the middle of desert places. The valley of weeping, God, we turn into a place of joy as we make time for you, as we settle our souls and we find refuge with you. We trust you, God, that as we go through the journey, as we go through the valley, that we'll find from strength to strength, God, I pray, God, for families today that are struggling. God, for that wife that is doing everything she can to hold her family together spiritually. God, feels like she's failing. I pray, God, encourage her today. Let her know that, God, this valley, this journey she's on, she will, as she pursues you, God, and cries out to you on behalf of her family, she will find strength. Father, for that husband, that husband that is so far from you, God, and he's trying to do it on his own, may he realize that, God, he cannot do it on his own. May he surrender his life to you and call out to you and ask you to help him through the valley. God, for those today that are heartbroken, for those here in this place today who are weary, for those who are weak, for those who feel defeated, for those who are depressed, for those who are discouraged, for those today who feel like life is so miserable. God, may they turn their eyes towards heaven and may they cry out to the God of the valley. God, may you give them strength. You know, if that's you today, would you just lift your hands all across the place? I don't know who's who that's for today, but would you just lift your hands all across this place and just begin to just say, God, God, I'm in the valley. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you, God. Be my strength. Be my hope. Be my help. I cannot do it without your presence. So God, I pray, strengthen those who have their hands raised to you today. They surrender their life that lift our hands. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him. For he is Lord of all. Thank you, God. You are risen. You are victorious. May we take that strength through the valley. May we find hope in you every day. Help us to be reminded that you are the God of the valley. You're going to walk us through. In Jesus' name, everybody say.